Thursday's visits were to Chateau Chenonceau and then after that on to the linked Chateau Chaumont. Chateau Chenonceau was built by the Controller General of Finances of King Francis I, Thomas Bohier and his wife Catherine Briconet. When you get closer to it, you realise that it's actually been built in the middle of a river, which is fairly crazy, and it has a drawbridge, so you can reach it. It is truly spectacular, though. The original castle on the right there was demolished, and this was built in its place. As you can see, the castle looks out onto the river. As with the other chateau of the era, the stonework is quite magnificent. The castle overlooks Catherine de Medici's garden, who was one of the owners of the chateau. And it was her that built the completely crazy extension to the castle on arches leading to another drawbridge to the other side of the river. Inside the castle, you learn the story of Catherine de Medici de Medici, Henry's wife, who, when Henry was accidentally killed in a tournament, she insisted that this castle was given by Dan de Poitouet to her in exchange for chaumont sur loire which we will see later. This is the desk from which Catherine de Medici ruled the whole of France during her regency. And the ceiling has ornate embellishments with the double C and H. So she could rule France whilst looking out at the river. And then leading along a little passageway, you get to this enormous 200 foot ballroom that you saw before. 20 foot wide and 200 foot long, where she held the most extravagant balls. And you can see from the outside that it has no other function, it's just ostentatious. Quite spectacular though. Inside there are carvings saying, if I finish this building work, I will be remembered by the original couple that built it. And basically not much furnishing, lots of tapestries and lots of portraits of the previous owners. This is a portrait in an incredible frame of Louis XIV who visited here. That's the view from Catherine de Medici's window and balcony, looking out at the two gardens. This is the bedroom of Catherine de Medici with amazing tapestries. The bed is carved with the initials of Henry and Catherine with interlocking H's and D's and pictures of them carved into the wood at the base of the bed. Also, the salamander and stoat of Francois and Claude, King and Queen of France at the time. Outside the castle are some beautiful grounds, as well as the gardens we've just seen. But I didn't really have time to explore them all fully. I then drove on to Ampoir, which is an important castle in its own right, but really didn't have time to visit that. Apparently there isn't much inside and there isn't really much in the town either because we're at, what I really wanted to get on to was Chaumont, which was the castle that Catherine de Medici insisted that, that uh, Diane de Poitiers took in exchange for Chanceau. So again, beautifully carved stonework on a hill overlooking the Loire inside much more austere and not so impressive lots of memories of Catherine de Medici and Diane de Poitiers that chair is specially designed so you can't get stabbed in the back through it and again 
Catherine Medici there on the right. This is her chapel that she could look out on so she didn't have to leave the room while running France. The portrait of Catherine shows for seven very rare natural pearls in a necklace which she then gave to Mary Queen of Scots. However, Elizabeth I coveted these and when Mary the Queen of Scots was imprisoned in England, Elizabeth I took the pearls and they are in one of the royal crowns at this very day. You can see that double C, which in fact is not Chanel, obviously copied, which is Catherine de Medici's sign and everywhere there is this double C and interlocking and H's. This is a much more modern representation of how it looked for the more recent owners. A porcupine with a crown on the fireplace. Then when you go outside, you see the view of the Loire Valley, which is quite spectacular, which is one of the reasons for visiting this chateau. It is quite immense and although not as pretty as Chenonceau, it has its own qualities. But there you have the view over the Loire. Back outside the front again, very imposing to look at, but I say not a patch on Chenon, so 